Okay, so let's see the practical app you are going to develop at the end of these lessons. So this is the source code you will be developing. And once you run it, you will see um, a web application. And this is a survey system you are going to develop, a real world survey system. And this is a complete project where the admin can log in, uh, can register uh, if they want, or they can um, uh, log in using their previous credentials. Uh, likewise and sign in and then admin will be taken to the admin dashboard which has uh, lots of options such as uh, to define the questions these are all coming from the database dynamically uh, and you uh, you will learn how to add edit delete the data and populate the data dynamically likewise and define the questions so the data will uh, appear dynamically and then uh, you learn how to create settings pages and save the uh, data to the database once again and see who are the respondents who has taken this survey and uh, with the log information you learn how to create uh, sophisticated search dashboards and you will learn about how to uh, filter data and search where admin can find information about different users who has taken the survey so and then if I log out and then a normal user uh, if a normal user comes to the home page a normal user can start taking the survey a user can uh, register if needed or if not a user can take it uh, anonymously user will be able to take this anonymously let's say if this is test uh, test to user so test to add so and if user says no I don't want to register and if user says next then the survey will start anonymously and all the data is coming from the uh, database uh, so you learn about connecting to a remote database uh, which is not in this computer it's on a remote server so you will learn how to do that and then you will learn how to take the survey questions and there will be multiple survey questions so I will uh, just uh, fast forward this so I fast forwarded the questions I just click next and answered them and final question is what is the state so if the user says okay this is the state and click next and these are the questions I answered so uh, and then the user uh, or the respondent can review them and submit the answers so then the data will go into the remote database so you will learn about how to save it and click next and then it takes the user or the respondent back to the home page so this is the app you will be developing at the end of these lessons and the speciality of this app is it's a data driven app and it's completely dynamic and all the data is coming from the database and there is admin dashboard a sophisticated admin dashboard and a separate user uh, sessions you will learn the complete source code from the scratch to develop this so let's go and develop this application now let's start doing it now Hi everyone, welcome to the ASP.NET complete project service system part 5 database configuring the project. So this is the continuation of a complete project. So make sure to have a look at the previous sessions and uh, this session is talking about uh, configuring the project to, the, uh, to access the database. We'll be using these tools for this lecture and make sure to cover these prerequisites before you start this lecture. So in this session, you will learn about uh, adding to the project uh, the connection string to connect to the database. And also in the project, the web.xml configuring it uh, for um, uh, accessing the database. And then uh, also you will be learning about alternatively to access uh, or connect to the database using uh, Visual Studio Server Explorer just to view the data. And then finally, you will be uh, learning about how to create a dbutil class to access the connection string uh, and some other information. As usual, it's going to be practical demonstrations. Now, let's go and start doing the practical. Now, uh, so we had a couple of previous parts uh, before this. So this is part five. But in this part is where we are creating the Visual Studio project for the first time. Yeah. In the previous parts, we were doing the other uh, important stuff, but now only we are going to create the 
Visual Studio project and now only we are going to start uh, coding the project. So let's go and do the practical now. So let's start Visual Studio uh, and then let's create a new project. So click uh, create new project at the bottom over here and then from this select uh, ASP.NET C sharp because you will be programming using C sharp programming language so ASP.NET C sharp and from this list make sure to select uh, ASP.NET uh, framework option. So scroll down and find ASP.NET web application .NET framework so don't select .NET core or anything else make sure you select .NET framework this option and make sure that it is C sharp right and Windows Cloud so select this option and then click next asp.net.net framework and now give a project name and then a location uh, that those are the important two things you have to do here now so we have given the project name survey underscore system underscore part part 5 so let's click the create button now keep the remaining settings as it is uh, in the previous project and here we will be selecting uh, empty project without selecting anything else and just click create so this will create the uh, Visual Studio project okay so the project got created and you can see in the uh, server explorer so it's uh, empty so now we will start creating files one by one now the first thing is uh, whenever we want to create connect to the database uh, we have to create uh, we have to define a connection string so that is one way of doing it so what we are going to do now is to create a connection string so you declare the connection string normally inside the web config uh, this will be the connection string to the database so inside the web dot config you will declare the connection string so now I will look at the current web dot XML and now we are going to add uh, the connection string into this so type uh, the element connection string and uh, closing element connection string so just type this now so then inside this you declare the connection string let's do it now okay so this is the element connection string so you need to type this uh, this is a standard uh, connection string element so make sure you don't do any mistakes in typing this so you have to say add name connection string don't change that then you have to uh, give a at property attribute called connection string and this data source that you can't change it has to be written as it is data space source and this first one is the um, this value is the IP address or the unique uh, URL or the location of your database so make sure you get this from your uh, on a remote DBMS dashboard right so this is the uh, unique location of the database or the IP address so you will see this um, in your uh, dashboard in your uh, online remote DBMS dashboard so in our dashboard uh, it will be uh, it is the value MS SQL server address so whatever the value in front of this make sure to put that value uh, take it from here MS SQL server address so that is the one which should go over there so that value you have to carefully copy and put it here and then there should be a semicolon right make sure make sure the semicolon is there because if you do a mistake this will not work then initial catalog this is the database name the database name you have created so in this case uh, if you look at my mouse our database name is uh, over here under databases this is the database name so make sure whatever the database name you have given this one exactly should go over there inside the connection string so make sure that in front of initial catalog there should be equal sign and then you have to put that database here and again a semicolon and the user ID you have to write it as it is with a space and then whatever the username in the dashboard of your remote database and the password right so those two so in the dashboard here it says the login name and the login password so in the values in front of this is what you have to put over there inside the connection string and then you have to have the provider 
name uh, system dot data dot SQL SQL client. When it comes to connecting to a database, you can use different providers. But in this case, because you are connecting to the Microsoft SQL server, the, it has to be system dot data dot SQL client. If it's a different database, your provider name will be different. So for Microsoft SQL Server database, the provider name should be system dot data dot SQL client. So you have to be very careful in giving this connection string. Okay, so now uh, uh, from different uh, pro files in this project, you, you are going to access this connection string in when you write coding for the uh, other areas in, in, in the next lessons, you need the connection string to be accessed from many, many files. So in, in a situation like this, the best thing is for you to create a utility class, let's say inside a, ut a folder called util, you can create a utility utility class, we call it uh, called db utils. You just, it's, it's a term, it's, to, it's a normal term to say utility classes, meaning like classes which are reusable and helpful. So you can create a class called db utils uh, and then you can uh, use that class to return the connection string. So that's what we are going to do now. So in the project, let's right click and say add a new folder. Let's call it as utils folder. Utils. Now inside this utils folder, let's create a class called db utils. So I'm going to create a class called db utils. Right click on the utils folder and say add a new item and select not web, select code from here and say class and over here give the name as db utils. It's going to be a C sharp class, make sure it dot, dot CS is there. So add it. So now it created a public class called db utils. Now so this class inside from inside this class we can uh, ask it to return the connection string. We can write a method to return the connection string. So let's do it now. So how you do it is you will declare an attribute like this. So you are creating a private a static string. You call it as connection string. Just type this equal to then you are going to access the connection string from the web.xml because that is where you declare the connection string. And in the web.xml, you gave, you added, you gave the name connection string. If you remember, look at the web.xml, you uh, assign the connection string. So that is what you are going to refer now. So I, by mistakenly, I said web.xml, it is web, uh, web.config. So look at the web.config, you have said add name connection string. So here, if, if you said x, then from that you, dbutil class, you will refer it as x. If you say y, you will refer it as y. But here you have said connection string. So we can say if you have multiple connection strings, that means if you are if your program is if your website is connecting to multiple databases, you can have connection string one, then you can say add uh, connection string two, then add connection string three, likewise. But in this case, we have only one connection string and we have given the name as connection na uh, uh, name as connection string. So that is what from the configuration manager, it's a class dot uh, connection string. It's a uh, property of it. So from that, you are connection strings is a property. From that, you are telling, okay, give me that connection string one or two or three. But here it's only one, so we just said connection string, right? Then dot connection string. So this is a standard syntax for you to access the connection string from the web dot config. Now for this to work, you can see there's an error that is because this uh, configuration manager is coming from a namespace. So you have to make sure you import that namespace by telling using system.configuration. So from that is because configuration manager comes from uh, system.configuration. So that is something very important for you to do. So that you, as you saw, now the error went away from uh, configuration manager. So I'm getting another error because uh, uh, that's a silly mistake what we have done here. This attribute should come inside the class. So I have declared it inside the namespace, which is by mistake. So uh, 
the attribute should come inside the dbutil class. Okay, so that's a mistake. And then for the configuration manager to work, you have to import using uh, your system dot configuration. All good. So now this line will access the web dot config. This part will access the web dot config, and will get that connection string and con get it as a connection string, and then what you do is you just store it in a variable called connection string. So this is how you access the connection string, so uh, which is declared in the web.config. And as I said, inside the web.config, if you have given the name x, here you will say x, whatever the name given. So now you got access, you have uh, at, uh, you created attribute which has the connection string. Now what you do is you will write a method to return this connection string to any class so that any class calling this method can get this. So we just wrote this method now. So it's a public method, static, and it's returning a string, and the method name is get connection string, and it simply returns this connection string. So it's a static method, so any other cl outside class, and it's a public method, and this is a public class, so any other outside class can access this class uh, through this namespace, and then from this class dbutils, it can access this public static method get connection string. Because it's a static method, it, it, don't need, it will not need an object, it can directly call this method. So this is how you create a simple dbutil class to return the connection string, to, which is pointing to a database. Okay, so, so for this uh, lesson, for this part, that is all we do, we need to do uh, as part of the configuration. Now we can go and write the other classes, the other web pages inside this project to access this connection string and connect to the database. That is what we are going to do in the next part, next lesson. But before that, we will also show something additional to you. That means uh, in Win, uh, Visual Studio, you got this server explorer in the left-hand side, not the solution explorer. It is solution explorer in the right-hand side. In the left-hand side, Server Explorer, if you click that, you can create a connection, right? So what you can do here is you can click this icon over here and you can say connect to data base. And what you can do is just you can connect to your database from here. But remember, that is just for you to look at the database, right? Now, in the previous lessons, uh, what we did was whenever we want to look at the database, we went to uh, the remote DBMS uh, dashboard and we went to the SQL command line and we type select all from whatever the table name. That is uh, that is fine, but additionally, if you want, you can do the same thing here, similar to that here, if you create a connection. And then you can, the sample data, when we inserted, you uh, we in use insert uh, SQL commands. Instead of that, you can just insert sample data from here. So if I click uh, connect to database, but remember that this is just all for you to look at the data, but you have to still write the code in, inside C Sharp coding, right? So what you can do is just to, for you to look at the data, you can say connect to database, then it will load this page. And then you can give those four parameters here. Like all, all of you know, there are four parameters to connect to the database, which is the server name, and then the uh, database name, and the username, and the password. So those values you can get from your uh, remote uh, DBMS dashboard and put them here. And these are the same values we put into the connection string, right? The same values. So let's put them here now. So type the server name and then from here select uh, not Windows authentication, make sure to select SQL server authentication and then put this username and the password taking from your remote uh, DBMS dashboard. And once you give the username and the password, you can select your database from this list. It will take a little while to connect, but then you can select your database from this list. And also you can click this test connection button and it will, it will show you that if your uh, given data are correct, it will, uh, it will say connection is successful. Let's do that now. Let's select the database and also let's say test connection. So now you can see, we click the test connection button and it says connection succeeded. That means you connected successfully. 
and one more thing when uh, you when you click this drop down to select the database it will show you uh, multiple values but make sure you select the database which you created so now the connection is successful so if you have given any invalid data here it will say connection is not successful but in this case it is successful so now let's click the OK button and then let's click OK and then let's close this window now. So I clicked OK. So now what it is doing is if you look at the left hand side, it's trying to connect to the remote database and it got connected successfully. Right. So you can see my mouse. So it has connected to the database and now it, if you expand, you can see all the tables which you created. These are the tables. And if you want, from here you can uh, select and insert data or you can look at the database um, columns, right? You can uh, look at the structure of the database tables over here like I did. And then if you want, you can insert data, meaning uh, sample data. You can, what you can say is right click on this and you can say, if you want, you can say show table data or you can open the table definition, right? So let's say show table data. Also make sure you click open table definition and see what's going to happen. So it, it will take a little bit of time because when you do that, it's connecting to the remote server uh, and then it's uh, loading the data from the remote server and it's taking a little bit of time to display it over here. So depending on how fast your network connection is, uh, it will take a little bit of time. So you have to wait for a while until the table is uh, loaded. It took a little while and then it loaded the table data. So if you want you can just click here at the bottom and just enter the data as well. Uh, you can just click here and type some uh, whatever the sample data. right? But remember what we did is just to look at the data. right? This, But still as I said as we said earlier you still have to go and write your C-sharp coding code to connect to the database and you have to create the web pages and which is what we are going to do in our next lessons. Okay, so the conclusion is you learn about adding the connection string to web.config and you created the dbutil class and then uh, you learn about creating connecting to the database from the server explorer. So it is not web.xml, it is web.config. So now uh, you, you did that and uh, we did it practically. Conclusion is you learn about those. So references we'll be using for this uh, project. It's a complete project. We'll, these are the references. So what you have to look at next is we'll be in, in the next project, next uh, lesson, next part. What we are doing is we are going to create the home page and also we are going to create the master page of this uh, web application. So it's a complete project from A to Z and you will learn about how real world developers are developing complete projects. So make sure to have a look at the other parts for you to get that uh, uh, experience and, and get an opportunity to go and work in the industry. So we are very excited to teach you about uh, the next part and see you all in the next part.